Okay, first item on the agenda is approval of last month's minutes. Uh, if there are no corrections or additions, all in favor of approving the minutes from last month? Aye. Aye, Aye. raise your hand, thank you. Very good. Uh, second item on the agenda is just updates. And the only update that I have is, um, we had a public session for the floodplain bylaw. I don't know if I reported about this last month or not, but there was an opportunity uh, for people to ask questions. Um, and there was a, you know, there was some confusion about how the bylaw would be implemented, mostly because I kept asking questions that nobody knew quite how to answer. So it says in the, the draft bylaw that I have that essentially all work in floodplains have to, has to be reviewed and approved by the Conservation Commission. And um, since we have to review and approve almost everything that happens in the floodplain already. It's just a matter of picking up things that otherwise would have been exempt from us, like ag would probably be the, the, the primary one. And so there were a lot of questions about what exactly would be required. You know, can they, can, if somebody has a road in a floodplain, can they fill in the potholes on the road? And generally these kinds of details would be handled through the regulations. So you would pass a bylaw and then you would follow up by writing regulations that put in place procedures for how people, you know, submit to the Conservation Commission what they want to do and, and how the Conservation Commission will respond. What are the expectations in terms of performance standards or other things like that? And so apparently nobody thought of that. You know, so when I asked the question is like, are there going to be regulations for this? The, the planning board said, well, we don't, ever, we don't have regulations. We just have bylaws. In, uh, but in this case, it seems like we would need it. So um, it, we might be in the odd position where the planning board proposes a bylaw and it's passed a town meeting and the conservation commission has to write regulations uh, in order to implement it. Now, um, Hannah is going to be the floodplain administrator. And so it could be that a lot of this work would go through her and, you know, the applications would go to her and then she would contact the commission and get on our agenda. And then we would review it. And Hannah would probably be available to help us when it comes to writing the regulations for it as well. But at this point, the whole thing is on hold. Uh, they decided we weren't ready to go to the town meeting yet. And uh, the floodplain maps are being updated and digitized. So uh, it was thought, it, and I think those are due to be out in the summer. And so what, um, what Judy Markland told me was, is they're just gonna wait until the maps come out and then figure out what to do. And I guess perhaps go to town meeting in the fall or you know, maybe next spring, I'm not sure which. So that's the update that I have on that. Uh, you can ask questions. I can't promise that I can answer them, but uh, feel free. No, you, you just answered my question. I, mean, I read the materials when they came around and uh, had questions about how they got uh, enforced and what the standards were going to be. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't been as engaged as I probably should have been. I sort of figured that the planning board would come and get me if they needed me. Uh, to, uh, and, and, you know, I knew that there was going to be a role for the Conservation Commission, but it, I didn't realize that we were going to be the primary ones, along with the administrator in it, enforcing and administering the bylaws. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think it'll be too bad. It'll just take a little bit of focus to figure out how to write some regulations and set in place some expectations, primarily for you know things that don't fall under the Wetlands Protection Act, because I think whatever is under the Wetlands Protection Act is already covered, mm -hmm. uh, you know, meets the standards in the bylaw. So, you know, it really probably means working with the Ag Commission to come up with regulations that make sense for agriculture. 
Yes, the other exemptions like for mosquito control and for you know, maintenance of utilities, I don't imagine those are going to be very common. Uh, although we will have to make sure that they're covered by our, our, our regulations. But I think it's mostly ag, ag that'll end up coming in and asking what it is they're supposed to do. Is it just for major rivers like the Connecticut and what, like the Millers or stuff or? Uh, it, yeah, the, the biggest section is on the Connecticut River and then uh, or along the Connecticut River, but also the Mill River has mm -hmm. some significant floodplain and some of the tributaries like the West Brook and the Roaring Brook have some floodplain identified, although it's not extensive. So maybe, yes, I'm just major water bodies. That makes sense. Okay. So I guess in terms of other updates, I can just tell you things that are, that are probably gonna come to us. Um, so JD Ross, asked me to come out and look at a lot that he's buying from uh, the Thayers on Egypt Road by the railroad tracks. Uh, so that, that's a lot that got cleared and, and, and they started working with it. Uh, so I talked to him about the expectation. That one that he swore he was gonna um, make his home in? No, he made it, his home's the other lot. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah that was the other lot. And now this is gonna be JD's business. Um, so anyway, we talk, I talked to him about the expectation about buffer and that, you know, he would need to file at least an RDA with us. So I expect that might come in next month. Um, there's, Keith has got a project across from the Chang, uh, Chang farm where there's erosion at where that drainage culvert crosses the road and empties into Sugarloaf Brook. And so Terry Reynolds is working with Keith to put together the notice of intent for that. So that's probably gonna be next month. Um, they're still anticipating work at Hurlihy Park, which will be a fairly extensive project to, you know, pave the, the parking lot and the driveway and put in a bike maintenance shop or something like that where you know, cyclists can go and, and get under cover and put their bike up and work on their bikes if they if they have problems. Uh, so none of it seems problematic in terms of permitting. It's just that you know it'll eventually have lots of plans and verbiage to go through when that comes through. And uh, Nasami Farm has been talking to me about uh, some work that they want to do. They want to erect a building to process seeds. Um, and it's in the place where there's already um, sort of a temporary structure, I guess, sort of like a greenhouse kind of structure. And it's just over 100 feet from the Roaring Brook. So it falls within riverfront area. But if they keep it within the footprint of that other structure, it could be redevelopment project and easy to permit. You know, I went through the process of asking, you know, is this a production facility or is this a processing facility? Because the exemption is dependent on it being production and not processing. So they seem to confirm that it was processing. And so it would have to be uh, a filing before us in order for them to, to proceed with that. Um, that, I think that's all I can think of that that might be in the hopper and almost ready to come to us. Not busy, that's good. Has there been anything more on the Tritown Beach? I haven't heard a word, no. I'm not sure that they're really that organized around what to do there, but mm -hmm. at least Brian knows, and I think Brian will keep an eye on it if it starts to move forward mm -hmm. somehow. Keep your ears to the ground, and if you hear anything, let me know. We had our first meeting of the um, housing committee since I temporarily joined, and I have a much clearer idea of our charge. Okay. So and is it going good. to be exciting? Um, it's going to be useful. Um, I can actually I can explain it real quick. This would be helpful for me to or to articulate it. I'm just going to look at my notes. 
Um, the reason why it's important for us to meet is because under state law chapter 40B, if a town is below 10% affordable housing as we are, um, developers can get exceptions to local zoning and we don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. So we need to develop a housing production plan because that will protect us from developers coming in and having our bylaws waived. So, so our charge is to develop a housing production plan, um, which means that we look at past trends, the current population, what we expect the population to need in the future, and what development constraints we have, um, and uh, figure out how we can develop affordable housing. So as long as we have a plan for that, then we're protected. Good. And then there were a lot of um, details about the definitions of things like what is affordable housing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you don't need to implement anything. You just have to have a plan for it. You have to, I mean, eventually we would have to implement things, but um, within this year, we have to have a plan. Yeah. Not so easy for rural towns like ours. It's yeah. You know, we don't have a lot of uh, public transportation that would make low income housing make sense uh, or affordable housing, but I guess, you know, anyway, good luck with that. <laughs> Thanks. Our first thing is, um, is putting out a survey. So fill out your survey from the housing committee. Okay. When you get one. Yeah. I remember this once before, and there was some public meetings about it, and there was consternation about those kind of people coming into town. And they were, I remember somebody reassured them that no, we were looking for senior housing. That's how we were going to avoid those kind of people coming into town. But uh, hopefully, we won't see a repeat of that when this goes out for public hearing. But I'm not entirely confident that that's true. We'll we'll try and frame it in an acceptable way. Yeah. Without lying. Like, like the fact that none of our kids can afford to live in Waitley, right? <laughs> <laughs> Those kind of people. Unless they're just staying with their parents. <laughs> right. <laughs> We've all experienced that. Yeah. At this point, I'm not sure that our kids can afford to live anywhere in the valley, but uh, we'll see. Um, is there anything else? No. Nope. All right. I guess we're done for another month. Um, so anyway, enjoy the springtime. Yeah. Hopefully the black flies won't be too bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see you in May. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.